Gemini 2.5 Flash Lite was released this week and it is insanely fast. And just to show you, it is so fast and so good at coding, Google built a real-time UI. This is a UI that as you click on it, builds itself. So it looks like an old school operating system. You can click into notes. This is all being generated in real time as you click on it. So nothing is pre-rendered, nothing is pre-coded. So here's the notepad, you click save, it saves it, go back to the desktop, the desktop might actually look different. And every time you click into a new folder, click back and then click into it again, it might be completely different. Obviously that's not gonna work in the real world, but as a proof of concept, it is really cool. So here they click into documents, then they go back, click into travel, all of the mapping, the buttons, everything created in absolute real time. Then clicked back into travel and everything looks different. And this is operating at 461 tokens per second. And by the way, if you're not already subscribed to our newsletter, check it out, forwardfuture.ai. Next, Meta and Oakley are working together for their next set of AI powered glasses. Now you've probably seen the Meta AI Ray-Bans. I have them, I love them. I actually don't use the AI feature that much, but the glasses themselves, the camera functionality, the video taking functionality, it's all great. And now Oakley is partnering with Meta. Let's take a look at these glasses. So Oakley styling, but they have the two cameras like normal. They probably have all of the same tech as the Meta Ray-Bans. I think they look really good. Much more of a sporty look versus the Meta Ray-Bans, which are more of a classic look. And yeah, of course, like always, you can ask questions to it. You can ask questions about your surroundings, listen to music, take calls. That's actually something that I do do with them is take calls on them, listen to music, so I don't have to take my phone out of my pocket. And yeah, very much targeted towards athletes. So what do you think? Are you gonna get these? Let me know. All right, next, Midjourney finally releases a video model, but it's kind of weird. You have to generate an image first and then click this animate button on the image. So I was really confused for a while about how to actually use the video model because with VO and basically every other video model, you essentially just type in a prompt. But with Midjourney's video model, you have to actually type in a prompt, generate an image, and then click the animate button. But that aside, it looks pretty darn good. Here's a spaceship. Here's kind of a creepy looking dude looking at a house in the water. The water physics look really good. That's cool. This is like a fantasy. Here's a kid with angel wings, hyper realistic astronaut sniffing flowers. This is kind of like a Final Fantasy-esque cutscene. And so yeah, I think it's really good quality. I'm gonna continue to test it out. If you wanna see a full video of me testing it, let me know in the comments. But there are a lot of good video models out right now. Hun Yun, I think it's pronounced, is another one. Gen 3, obviously. There's just a lot of really great models. And I'm gonna be making a tutorial video about how to load up either Wan 2.1 or Hun Yun Video by Tencent. Both of them are found right here in the video leaderboards by Artificial Analysis. They both perform very well, and they're both open source, and I want to show you how to use them. So $10 a month by Midjourney, check it out, let me know what you think. And next, Crea One is available. This is a text -to image model in collaboration with Black Forest Labs. So they specifically built this image model to avoid the AI look, which is a noble cause. We'll see if it actually works. And you can test it for free right now. Go check it out. That's Crea.ai and more generative art models. Now we have a new update from Higgsfield AI. This is Higgsfield Canvas, a state-of-the-art image editing model. Paint products directly on your image with pixel perfect control. So as you can see, these are actually videos and simply by highlighting something, you can paint on anything you want. This is really great. This will probably be used for marketing most of all, or maybe trying on clothes, but it looks really cool. So Higgsfield Canvas lets you place products with insane precision. Upload your pick, choose the area, size it to your liking, and you're done. It used to take hours, now it takes seconds, and one click in Higgsfield. So here's an example. Upload, kind of highlighting this section, select another image and say, Put that there, girl shows bottle, okay. Boom, and there it is. The hands look good, she looks exactly the same as she did pre-edit. Add products, swap clothes, apply fixes, even change faces. Just pick the exact spot and drop your edit. So here's another example, boom. Two cheeseburgers. Now, yeah, those cheeseburgers did not look real. Here's another one, explore the combo, canvas, speak, plus camera movements, and I guess that's how it goes from editing the image to actually having kind of a video. So check it out, higgsfield.ai.
And next, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Chatbase. They've been a great partner. Check them out. Chatbase is a powerful no-code platform that allows you to build customer support agents easily. Deliver fast, accurate, personalized support for your business to your customers using AI-powered agents trained on your own data. Chatbase is specifically designed to scale. So if you are a large company, an enterprise organization looking to scale up, your customer service, this is a great tool. You need to check it out. These AI agents can resolve customer issues 24 hours a day without the need for human intervention on every ticket. They leverage all of the leading AI models to do this. So whether you're putting these agents on your website or other digital channels, it is seamless across all of them. And with a Stripe integration, these agents can even access real-time billing information. So your customers can view billing status, download receipts, and check subscription details right from the chat window. So whether you're a startup or a large enterprise, check out Chatbase. It's awesome. The team behind it is awesome. And I'll drop the link down in the description below. Thanks again to Chatbase. And now back to the video. Next, in Meta's insane hiring spree, they have gone after seemingly everybody. So they just spent $14 billion on scale AI really to hire Alexander Wang, the CEO, and bring him on as the head of their super intelligence division. And now it is rumored that they tried to hire Ilya Sutskever. And by hire, I mean spend billions of dollars to buy his company safe super intelligence. However, when Ilya rebuffed Meta's offer, they went after his co-founders instead. Listen to this. According to the information, Meta is in talks to hire AI investors, Nat Friedman and Daniel Gross, partially buy out their venture fund. So they had this separate venture fund, but they are also part of Safe Super Intelligence. And Daniel Gross is a co-founder of Safe Super Intelligence. So we'll see if this actually happens. This would be absolutely brutal. Meta is in discussions about partially buying out Friedman and Gross's venture capital fund, NFDC, which holds stakes in top AI startups and is worth billions of dollars on paper, the person said. If the talks are successful, Gross would leave Safe Super Intelligence, which he co-founded with former OpenAI chief scientist Ilya Suskover last year. And this news comes right on the heels of Sam Altman saying that Meta thinks of us as their biggest competitor. They started making these like giant offers to, uh, you know, a lot of people on our team, mm -hmm. um, you know, like $100 million signing bonuses. These numbers are insane and just goes to show you top AI research talent is everything right now. It seems we were in the world of infrastructure build out and throwing as much money as you could behind that. And of course that's still important, but now it's all about the talent. And from Meta's hiring spree, now let's move on to OpenAI. OpenAI and Microsoft's relationship has been on shaky ground for a little while now. And we're starting to get some leaks of information about exactly what that looks like right now. And again, according to the information, OpenAI seeks new financial concessions from Microsoft. And if you didn't already know, Microsoft owns 49% of OpenAI, and they probably want to get some of that equity back as they continue to try to grow out into one of the world's most valuable companies but they are hamstrung by the fact that they are a nonprofit and they have this weird, complex corporate entity structure. It's just awkward. So they're trying to do everything they can to build it out. But just a few months ago, they said, okay, we're not gonna actually try to convert to a for-profit. I think they just got too much flack and the legal hurdles were too high. So now they're trying to, again, just play games with the corporate structure. And that only goes so far. I was told early and often, the only thing in Silicon Valley you should not be innovating in is corporate structure. And this is all within the context of negotiations between OpenAI and Microsoft to try to restructure OpenAI to be much more of a traditional corporate structure for profit and let's read a little bit. Negotiations between Microsoft and OpenAI over the startup's plan to restructure its for-profit unit. So remember, the for-profit is owned by the nonprofit, which requires Microsoft's approval, have entered their eighth month with no end in sight and new conflicts emerging. Microsoft has no reason to give any concessions during these negotiations. They already own 49% of it. They are already investing in all of OpenAI's competitors, and they probably see OpenAI as their ultimate competitor in the long run. OpenAI is investing in everything, hardware, models, applications, consumer applications, enterprise. They just bought Windsurf. Sam Altman's ambitions are enormous, and Satya Nadella is probably looking at them and saying, well, 
why would I give you anything? You are just going to come and try to defeat me in the future. So OpenAI wants Microsoft, the startup's biggest outside stakeholder, to have a roughly 33% stake in the reshaped unit in exchange for foregoing its rights to future profits. How does that make sense? So unless they are going to use some legal jujitsu, I don't really understand why Microsoft would give up ownership stake and give up future profits. What is the benefit to Microsoft? OpenAI also wants to modify existing clauses in its contract with Microsoft that give the software firm exclusive rights to host OpenAI models in the cloud. And it wants to exempt a planned $3 billion stock acquisition of AI coding startup Windsurf from the existing contract between the parties that grants Microsoft access to OpenAI intellectual property. Yeah, so OpenAI wants everything and I don't see any concessions from them. So Sam Altman and team are really trying everything they can to fix the problem they started all the way back in like 2013, 2014, when they decided to start a nonprofit, take a bunch of untaxed donations and use that to fund their research for years. In my opinion, doing all this fancy legal maneuvering to try to become a more traditional for-profit company, it just seems a little shady to me. But at the same time, OpenAI is truly one of the most important companies and research labs on the planet. And I know we talked about Google 2.5 flashlight and of course, Pliny the Liberator has jailbroken it. He is ruthless, relentless, please Pliny, give him a break. So we have Gemini 2.5 flash light preview liberated. Newest fast model out of DeepMind is quite solid for the speed, has thinking too, which somewhat surprisingly seems to be advantageous for jailbreaking when turned on. And we got the good old recipe, as well as how to make a bioweapon to destroy humanity, malware for exfiltration, and WAP lyrics. This is the nature of non-deterministic systems. Jailbreaking, I suspect, will be here forever. As long as humans can be jailbroken, also known as social engineering, and because we're building these models to behave and to kind of look a lot like how humans think and operate, of course they're going to be susceptible to some of the same flaws that humans have. Next, BrowserBase launched a new product with a really cool launch video. So BrowserBase, if you're not familiar, is an API to give your agents control of browsers. It allows you to browse the web with AI. And they now announce Director, which doesn't require any code. So you go to director.ai, you can type in anything you want and it will just go do it. It is just like Operator or Runner H and the other browser use agents. So let's check it out. That is a really cool animation. So it is thinking. We cannot see the thinking, unfortunately, but we can see the code when it's written. We have the browser right here. I'll help you find a dog leash on Amazon. Let's start by navigating to Amazon. So it goes to Amazon. You have the browser right here. It's writing code. And I think what is stagehand, but you can see it right here. It's actually going step by step, writing code for each of them, clicking on the thing that it needs to. Here we go. It's searching dog leash right now. And if we come over to the code tab, we can see all of the code being written. So if you want to reuse this, that's how you do it. It's very easy. And yeah, here we go. Import stagehand. And as I said, they had a really cool launch video. Obviously, this looks a lot like Severance. We can see Theo right there on these old school Macs. And yeah, this is supposed to resemble Severance. So very cool launch video. So congrats to Browser Base on their launch. Go check it out. And last, OpenAI is now working closely with the US government. They just closed a big contract with them. So introducing OpenAI for government. This is a new initiative focused on bringing our most advanced AI tools to public servants across the United States. We're supporting the US government's efforts in adopting best-in-class technology and deploying these tools in service of the public good. And all of their previous collaborations with the Air Force Research Laboratory, NASA, NIH, and the Treasury will all be brought under the OpenAI for government umbrella. This contract is a $200 million ceiling contract, so a big deal. And obviously OpenAI has some negative sentiment around them right now, but I guess we'll just see. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.